وسانديب شرما رئيس قسم الاستثمار في سنتكس كابيتال ينضم الينا سانديب اهلا ومرحبا بك معنا دعني ابدا معك من الاهم والابرز وهو الفيدرالي الامريكي ما بين الدوت بلوت توقعات خفض الفائده هذا العام راي مجلس احتياطي الفيدرالي تجاه التضخم ما هو الاهم في هذا الاجتماع برايك Well, I, I think in the FOMC meeting, they probably have to make a decision: how much will they cut, when will they cut, and by when do they have to wrap up their cuts? Being an election year, it is highly unlikely they will want to make these decisions going forward. Let's say past September, and if the expectations are they're going to cut cuts around May or June, then that's your compressed time frame where they have to make the decision. And I think their decision have to be. Uh, to cut, I say at least around a percent and a quarter or more, even though the expectation for rate cuts have been varying. So, could you get three cuts during that time? It is entirely possible, but it's going to be the timing of the cuts, the amount of the cuts, and most importantly, by when do they have to wrap it up, so they're not seen as making a move right around the election time frame. بنهاية العام الماضي كان الفيدرالي عم بيشوف ثلاث عمليات لخفض معدلات الفائدة على مدار العام 2024 ولكن لم يكن لديه البيانات الاقتصادية التي شهدناها خلال الفترة الماضية الارتفاع اللي شفناه بالسي بي آي بمؤشر أسعار المنتجين هل ترى بأن هذه البيانات قد نشهد, تعد... قد نشهد تأثيرها من ناحية تعديل في توقعات خفض الفائدة لهذا العام؟ Well, I, I think there's a little bit more than economic data that is at play here. And what is at play here is the inflation induced as a result of fiscal spending. And that is an area that the Fed really doesn't have very much impact. That's one important point. The other part is that at this point in time, the Fed has not been put forth with the challenge of uh, uh, rising unemployment. So because the unemployment data has held up, which I think there is a little issue with that, Because that is held up, they feel that in their dual mandate for stable employment, stable prices, they are able to just focus on the price component. I think at some point in time, we're going to see a significant rise in unemployment or a more of a uh, convergence of household survey as well as the establishment survey, which will probably cause some kind of a sudden reaction in terms of number of jobs that have been created. I think that's being misrepresented. So if they're faced with the issue of uh, dealing with uh, rising unemployment, I think they're going to have to act va uh, vastly differently and not have the kind of latitude and time they've had so far to defer their decision making. يعني سانديب نحن نتحدث اليوم عن الفيدرالي عن ما الذي نتوقعه من سياسة النقدية وأعتقد بأن العديد من المستثمرين لا يهمهم ما الذي نتحدث عنه فقط ينظرون إلى سهم انفيديا الذي يعود ليرتفع إلى فوق 900 دولار اليوم لدينا مؤتمر للشركة طيب متى متى نصل لمرحلة نقول بأنه اكتفى هذا السهم من الارتفاعات؟ Well, we may not get there very quickly. Although, you know, the expectation and the tendency is to look for a significant and sudden crash in the market. It is entirely likely we may not get that kind of a crash. It's possible because NVIDIA alone accounts for about 40% of the rise of the S&P this year. And if you add Microsoft and Eli Lilly to that, the market has been about artificial intelligence and weight loss. Those are the two things that are driving the upside in the market. On the other hand, if you go back and take a look at other stocks, you mentioned earlier in your commentary, Apple, Google, uh, Netflix, Tesla, they're all back to the same level that they were sometime in March or April of 2020 or 2021. So they're not any higher than their levels two or three years ago. The driver of the S&P this year has been NVIDIA, to some extent Microsoft, and then the other extent being uh, Eli Lilly. So you take those account, the market itself is not necessarily in a bubble. It is in that bubble because of the contribution of these three stocks. So if they don't necessarily go down much and the rest of the S&P comes up, there is a case to be made for further gains. Mm -hmm. However, we could have the opposite where the rest of the market does kind of okay. If there is a significant decline in Nvidia, as an example, it gives back a lot of the, the returns it has made. you could get a pretty significant correction in the S&P. 
but the market itself as a whole is not in the in a bubble it's more that these few stocks that have run so far ahead that caused the index to be that inflated سنديب سنستكمل هذا الحوار ودائما ما نستفيد من خبرتك اليوم ل نضع تشكيلة البورتفوليو في ظل كل هذه التحديات التي يواجهها اليوم المستثمر ولكن سنتحدث حول هذه المواضيع بعد في هذا الفاصل مع سانديب شرما رئيس قسم الاستثمار في سانتكس كابيتال سانديب دعنا نتحدث الان عن الملف الابرز ربما هو بالنسبه للمستثمرين خلال هذه الفتره الالوكيشن بالنسبه للمحفظه اذا تحدثنا بدايه عن الاسهم لاي درجه ما سيتحدث به جيروم باول خلال يوم الاربعاء سيؤثر على نظرتك لكم تضع الوكيشن لاسهم في محفظتك وما هي نوعيه القطاعات التي تركز عليها Well, let's start with the second part of your question first, uh, because the allocation would depend on whether you're allocating to the broad market or you're allocating to the area of the market that has not yet caught up. Uh, further, I would expand on that is to talk about segment of the market that is interest rate sensitive versus that is not so sensitive. And I think in that regard, uh, equities that have taken a beating because rates have been high you know 10 year has been bouncing all around from 380 back to 430 now so if your outlook is that the 10 year is going to be going down which is what my outlook is then i would look for areas to allocate which are sensitive to uh, declining 10 year treasury rates for example uh, less so much uh, worrying about what the fed is going to do or not going to do mm -hmm. and my outlook for the year has been since i've been discussing with you Uh, last October, 10-year uh, Treasury was 5% at the time, and my outlook for the end of the year was 4. It declined to 3.8 pretty quickly, and now we're at 4.3. I expect that to go down. So as a result of that, I would uh, allocate to equities and areas that are uh, undervalued, and also they're sensitive to declining interest rates, which I think is going to be the case. Uh, I would be less. I, I would be allocating less to the tech area. and uh, you know because of valuations and other concerns uh, but i think equities are a very good place to be in not looking at the top line of the s&p there is a lot of activity and there is a lot of opportunity below the top line to stock pick this year and those are some of the areas i outline for you هذا بالنسبه للاسهم ولكن هل ترى اليوم ايضا يوجد قد يكون فرصه في اسواق السندات لانه سنديب في الاونه الاخيره كان لدينا السبريدز فيري تايت يعني البعض يقول لماذا اغامر واخذ سندات هذه الشركات التريبل سي او البي في ظل هذا الضيق اليوم في السبريدز هل ترى فرصه في في الهاي يلد على سبيل المثال؟ ذات اي وود سيرتنلي لوك ات سم اوف ذا ارياز اوف هاي يلد بت ان برودلي سبيكينج ان ذا براد ان ذا بون ماركت there is some cause for concern whether inflation may remain stubborn mm -hmm. right and uh, as a result of the fiscal issues and no matter who comes into power politically the expectation is either they're going to cut taxes making uh, the deficit even greater and the you know the debt is growing very rapidly so that might cause some pressure from the bond market side for these companies but for equities that may benefit from you know the treasury is not going up so much uh, or are undervalued that's a little bit of a, dyna a different dynamic but i would certainly be looking at uh, you know high yield is a very attractive area with the expectation that there is not a significant decline mm. in the economy and there is a recovery in the next year 18 months i think that would be quite attractive well i thank you sandeep sharma rais qism al istithmar fi syntax capital shukran jazeera always a pleasure thank you